I would like to make a few comments concerning the difference between the black revolution and the Negro revolution. There's a difference. When you study the historic nature of revolutions, the motive of a revolution, the objective of a revolution, and the result of a revolution, and the methods used in a revolution, you may change words. You may devise another program. You may change your goal and you may change your mind. Look at the American Revolution in 1776. That revolution was for what? For land. How was it? Why did they want land? Independence. How was it carried out? Bloodshed. Number one, it was based on land. The basis of independence. And the only way they could get it was bloodshed. The French Revolution. What was it based on? The land less against the landlord. What was it for? Land. How did they get it? Bloodshed. Was no love lost. Was no compromise. Was no negotiation. I'm telling you, you don't know what our revolution is. Because when you find out what it is, you'll get back in the alley. You'll get out of the way. The Russian Revolution. What was it based on? Land. The landless against the landlord. How did they bring it about? Bloodshed. You haven't got a revolution that doesn't involve bloodshed. And you're afraid to bleed. I said you're afraid to bleed. Long as the white man sent you to Korea, you bled. He sent you to Germany, you bled. He sent you to the South Pacific to fight the Japanese, you bled. You bleed for white people. But when it comes time to seeing your own churches being bombed and little black girls murdered, you haven't got no blood. So I cite these various revolutions, brothers and sisters, to show you, you don't have a peaceful revolution. You don't have a, a, a turn the other cheek revolution. There's no such thing as a non-violent revolution. Only thing, only kind of revolution that's non-violent is the Negro revolution. The only revolution based on loving your enemy is the Negro Revolution. The only revolution in which the goal is a desegregated lunch counter, a desegregated theater, a desegregated park, and a desegregated public toilet. You can sit down next to white folks on the toilet. That's no revolution. Revolution is based on land. Land is the basis of all independence. Land is the basis of freedom, justice, and equality. The white man knows what a revolution is. How do you think he'll react to you when you learn what a real revolution is? You don't know what a revolution is. If you did, you wouldn't use that word. A revolution is bloody. Revolution is hostile. Revolution knows no compromise. Revolution overturns and destroys everything that gets in its way. Bobby Field is going through all types of physical and mental torture. But that's all right, because we said even before this happened, and we're going to say it after this, and after I'm locked up, and after everybody's locked up, that you can jail a revolutionary, but you can't jail a revolution. Right. You might want to liberate like Eric Cleave out the country, but you can't run liberation out the country. You might murder a freedom fighter like Bobby Hutton, but you can't murder freedom fighters. And if you do, you come up with answers that don't answer explanations that don't explain. You come up with conclusions that don't conclude. And you come up with people that you thought should be acting like pigs, just acting like people and moving on pigs. And that's what we've got to do. 
But we're going to see about Bobby, regardless of what these people think we should do. Because school is not important, and work is not important. Nothing's more important than stopping fascism, because fascism will stop us all. We're going to demand justice for everyone who's been wronged by the police in this city. It's time. It's been time. In order for you and me to devise some kind of method or strategy to offset some of the events or re a repetition of the events that have taken place here in Los Angeles recently, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. And it is because of our effort toward getting straight to the root that people oftentimes think we are dealing in hate. We are oppressed. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. So the only way we're going to get some of this oppression and exploitation away from us or aside from us is come together against a common enemy. <laughs> Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you? And I, for one, as a Muslim, believe that the white man is intelligent enough. If he were made to realize how black people really feel and how fed up we are without that old compromising sweet talk. Stop sweet talking it. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how, what kind of hell you've been catching and let him know that if he's not ready to clean his house up, if he's not ready to clean his house up, he shouldn't have a house. It should catch on fire and burn down.